Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm showing how to make a gender reveal card using the perforation blade. You do need to have the Cricut Maker to be able to use this blade. My family is expecting another baby in early February, and I thought this would be a fun tutorial, and I'll show you what the gender of the baby is at the end of the video. We already have one boy and one girl, these cards are great if you have family who lives out of town. This can let them be a part of the gender reveal and you can get really creative. I hope you enjoy this video and let's get into the tutorial. First, what I'm going to do is create my card in Cricut Design Space. If you don't want to make your own card, there is plenty of templates under projects in Cricut Design Space so you can choose from that as well. But I'm just going to go over to my shapes and grab a square. There's lots of different standard sizes for greeting cards or just cards in general. And the one I'm going to be using is A6. I'm going to be using print thin cut for my card and I didn't want it to be too big because I wanted it to fit in the size limit on Cricut. So the height of my card is 6.25 so I'm going to hit the unlock button and type in 6.25 then I'll hit enter. The width of the card when it's folded is 4.5 inches, but the way that we're going to create the card in Cricut Design Space will be like it's laying open. So that's why I want to make the width 9 inches. So all I did is times 4.5 times 2. So hopefully that makes sense, but I am going to make it 9 inches for the width. And if we were to cut this directly in half, then it would be 4.5 inches on each side. I'm just going to change this to white for now. Next, I'm going to add a scoring line. And what the scoring line does is shows you where exactly to fold your card. So I am going to go to shapes again, and the score line is under shapes. So I'll select that. I'm gonna bring it over here, and I want to put this directly in the center of my card where it will get folded. The first thing I want to do is make it the same height as my rectangle. So I'll come up here and type in 6.25. Now I just want to make sure the score line is lined up. So I'm just going to drag over both of these. If you look in the layers panel, you can see that they're both selected. I'm going to go to align and align to top. Then I'm going to go back to align, they're both still selected, and I'm going to select center. I'm not going to attach this quite yet because I'm going to be doing a lot of different things with the card. I'm just going to make sure that I don't move it so that it stays lined up. So I am going to be using print and cut for my card, and I decided I wanted a fun background for it. So I made this card ahead of time so that I could figure out exactly how I wanted it before I filmed it and I decided to search for free background images, and I found this one. I thought this would be cute for a gender reveal card. So what I'm gonna do is go down to this one. I'm just going to select it, and all I'm gonna do is right click and hit save image. Then it'll save to my downloads folder, so I'll just hit save. And I can link this down in my description box so you can see where I got it from. This pulled over into my downloads folder. I have two now since I've already downloaded it. So now it is on my computer. Now I want to upload that background. So I'm going to click on uploads and instead of going to upload image, which is what I usually do to upload SVGs and images into Cricut, I am going to go over to pattern fill and I'm going to select upload pattern. I'll just double click on this and you can name it right here. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Then I'll just click on upload. Then I'll go click on uploads to bring me back to Cricut Design Space. So for the next part, I'm just going to select on my rectangle again. I'm going to come up to operation and it's set to cut right now, but I need to switch it to print thin cut first before I add my pattern. So I'm just going to select standard under print thin cut. Then I'm going to go up to my color and you can see a drop down here. I'm going to select that and select pattern. It gives you a lot of options. Cricut Design Space has a ton of options already in here, but I'm going to select the one that I uploaded and usually those are closer to the top and you can see them right here. So I'm just going to select one of those. 
and you can see it fills it in. But you can also go to edit pattern and you can adjust um, the scale so you can make it quite a bit bigger or smaller. So if you go like this, you can see it makes it a lot bigger, which obviously that's way too big. But um, if I go back to it, you can also make it quite a bit smaller. So you can adjust it exactly how you like it, which I really liked how it was the first time. So I'm just going to hit undo a couple times. I actually went back in and I adjusted it a little bit and I like the size of that. Now what I'm going to do is add what I want on the front of my card. So I'll have my image and my perforation cut. For my image, I'm going to have a balloon coming out of a box and the balloon will be the perforation where you peel it back and it'll show if it's a boy or a girl. Now I'm just gonna grab my balloon. I'm gonna go to Cricut Images. You can also search online. You can find tons of free clip art if you don't have like Cricut Design Space um, access or anything. So I'll select Images. If I type in balloon, you can see a whole bunch comes up and I'm just gonna find the one that I used. Here's the one that I'm going to use, so I'll just insert that into Cricut Design Space. I'm going to change this a little bit though. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. You can see that this has four different layers. One's already hidden and I don't need it, so I'm just going to select it, right click and hit delete. Then I'm just going to select this and hit ungroup. I'm just gonna slide this over to see what the layers look like. Just this part of the balloon, I want it to cut out with the perforation blade and I want the string part of the balloon to be separate. So I'm actually gonna hit undo and bring this brown part of the balloon back over. I'm going to slice these two layers to separate the string. So what I'm gonna do is highlight over both of these, then I'll select slice, then I'll just move these out of here. Now I only need one of the top of the balloon, so I'm just gonna delete these. Then I'm just gonna drag this up next to it. I'm gonna highlight over both and bring them over my card and I'll just adjust the sizing. Before I do any more with this, I'm going to upload one more picture. So I'm gonna to go to my uploads and I found this box online and just saved it to my downloads. I just Googled box free images and found one online. I had looked on the Cricut Design Space images and they had nothing where the box was opening like that. So now I want the balloon to be coming out of the box. So I'm going to right click and hit move backwards. I can get this all lined up. I'm just gonna make this a little smaller so it fits right inside there. And I want the balloon part to be a little bit bigger so I have enough room to write it's a boy or it's a girl. Now I'm going to add the words he or she down here. So I'm going to go to text, then I'm going to select autumn and November. This is one of my favorite script fonts. It's really pretty. So I'm gonna type in he with a question mark and I'm going to change it to a blue color, kind of like a baby blue color. Since this is going to be print and cut also, you want the color to be exactly what you want it to be since that's exactly how it's going to print out. I think that looks pretty good, so I'll just turn it and make it fit inside the box here. Then I'm going to go to text again and I'll type in she with a question mark and I'll look for a pink that matches it. I think that looks pretty good, so I'll just turn it here. I actually want to make both of my font sizes the same so it matches. I'm just gonna select on he and when you come up here, it says font size, there will be a number. I'm going to select it and hit Command C on my keyboard. Then I'll select on she and select this and hit Command V to paste that number in. And that will make it the same size, the 26.92. So that way it just matches up really well. Now I'm gonna change this part to a different color. I don't want it this like teal green color. I am just gonna change it to a yellow. And I wanna do a brighter yellow, kinda of like this one, one of these dots. So I'm just gonna try to match it with that. Okay, I like that one. It probably doesn't match perfectly, but I think it's close enough. Now I'm ready to change my balloon to the perforation blade. So all I do is go up here. Right now it's set to a basic cut but I'm gonna go down to where it says perforate and select that one. Now you can see it changed where it has the little dashes like that. It kind of looks similar to the scoring line, but different tools be, will be used for each one. 
Now what I want to do is I have this set to print and cut, but I want to make the box, the he, she, and this part of the balloon all print and cut also. So I am just going to change all of this to print and cut. And actually I already have the box set to print and cut. I'm just going to change the letters to that as well. So I have all of these as print and cut, but I also want to flatten all of it together. If I don't flatten it all together, then it is going to cut around each individual letter and line. So we want it just to cut around the outside of the card. So when you flatten it together, that's how you make that happen. When I tried this earlier, I'll show you what happened if it does the same thing. I just have shift on my keyboard and I'm selecting all the layers I want to flatten. So if you look over in the layers panel, I have everything selected except for the perforation and the score line. And when I go down and hit flatten, like most of it disappears. So I figured out how to fix that. I'm going to hit undo. And what you have to do is you have to hide the perforation line and you have to hide the score line. Now I'm going to highlight over everything again and I'll hit flatten and you can see that time it worked. So I'm not sure why it wasn't letting me do that with that, but at least there's a way to fix it. Now I'll just unhide both of my different lines. You can see that I unhid it and it's still not showing up. That's because this is in the front. So all I'm going to do is right click and hit send to back and it'll show up there. Now I also need to attach these lines together. But what I'm going to do is highlight over everything. Then I'm just going to select attach. With that attached, that means the score line will stay in place and the perforation blade line will also stay in place. Now I just have one more piece to my card that I'm going to do. I am going to have an insert on the inside and this will say it's a boy or it's a girl and this is where we're going to want it to show up right inside this balloon here. I'm going to go back to shapes then I'm going to grab a square again and I want this to fit on the inside of this part of the card. So what I'm going to do is make it a quarter of an inch smaller. So I'm going to come up to my size here and my width is 4.5 on this side, so I'm just gonna make it 4.25. And then my height is 6.25 inches, so I'm gonna make it six inches. This part of the card is going to be white, so I am just going to select white, and I'm going to keep it as a cut image, and I'm just gonna have the Cricut cut out some cardstock. Now I'm going to add the text, it's a boy and it's a girl, I'm going to switch it to the font Europe Underground. Oops, I spelled Europe wrong. And I'm going to be using this as a writing font. So I'm going to have the Cricut right onto this piece of paper. So first I'm going to type in it's a boy. And then I am going to go over to align and center. Then I'm going to bring the line spacing in as much as I can. So what I'm going to do is go up to advanced and I'm going to hit ungroup to lines. This will separate each line and then I'll just bring this down a little bit. With all of these separated, I'm also just going to select the whole thing. And I think it looks fine, but this will just make sure it's all lined up. So I'll hit distribute horizontally and it moved the A just a tiny bit and I'll hit distribute vertically and that looked pretty good. So now I'll click attach and I'm going to type in it's a girl. Then I'll just go to center and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to bring my line space in as much as I can. Then I'm going to go to advanced ungroup lines and bring this down closer. Now I need to make each of these a drawing font. So I am going to go up to here. Right now it's set to cut and I need to go to pen. Then I'm going to choose my color that I'm using. I'm using a Cricut gel pen color 
and I didn't see it pop up here earlier. So what I'm gonna do is just pick a random color. I'm just gonna choose light blue and for it's a girl, I'm just gonna look for a pink color. I'm gonna change it to pen, then I'll look for a pink color. Let's do that one. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring the it's a boy up here. Well actually I think I'll bring it over here and just have it fit inside of the balloon. Also where you can see all these polka dots, that won't show up when you see the it's a boy part because this will be pulled back with the perforation. So I'll show you when I actually put the card together how it'll look. But now what I'm gonna do is bring this over here. This part gets a little tricky because I don't wanna just line this up on here and eyeball it because I wanna make sure it's for sure gonna show inside the balloon. So what I am going to do is highlight over both of this and I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm just gonna line this up where it looks like it's about a quarter inch on each side. Then I'm gonna right click while this whole thing is selected and hit send to back. So now that card is behind this, but what I need to do is find my pen right there. So I have it selected. You can see that it shows the outline, but I am going to right click over here and I am gonna hit send to front. You can see where I had it lined up, it's not perfect. So I'm gonna line it up a little bit better and just eyeball it. So I like that there. Now what I'm going to do is hide everything but that insert, that white sheet, and that it's a boy. So I'm just gonna select here and hit hide. And it looks like that's all I had to do because I had it all attached and everything. So now this is lined up exactly where the balloon is. So all I have to do is highlight over both, make sure that they're both selected, the pin and the rectangle. Then I'll just hit attach. Now I'm going to unhide the rest of my card and slide this over. I'm gonna be making two of these cards one that says it's a boy and one that says it's a girl and do the reveal at the end of the video of what I'm actually having. So now what I need to do is make one more for it's a girl and I'm gonna do the same process so I will just do this off camera. Okay, so I have my it's a boy, it's a girl insert and I just clicked on this and hit duplicate at the top here to get another one exactly the same. So I'll just delete that. I think these gender reveal cards are really cool for family that lives out of town and you can mail them so you can just duplicate however many you'd be mailing out. So now I'm just ready to click on make it. You can see that the first one is the print thin cut and the second one is the print thin cut and it almost fills up the whole page that you can print and then on the next page it's going to have the insert. It's gonna be doing a lot of things with this. Print then cut, it's going to cut, score, perforate, use the pen. So basically, the easiest thing with this is just follow all of the prompts on Cricut Design Space. Now I'll just select continue. The first thing it's going to do is print, so I'll select send to printer. My sublimation printer is selected, so I need to switch it to my workforce printer. I'm going to keep the bleed on, and I'm just going to select Use System Dialog and hit Print. By selecting the Use System Dialog, it'll come up with my print settings. All I'm going to do here is just select Best. Then I'll just hit Print. I get a lot of questions about what kind of printer I have. It's an Epson Workforce. I would recommend it. The only thing I don't like is how large the printer is. Now it's done printing the first one and it's going to go through the whole process with everything before it moves on to the next one. So it only printed one so far and I've already selected light cardstock for my material so I'm just going to grab that. Then you can see for step three, this is where it shows you what order to do what materials. First it says to load the single scoring wheel into clamp B, so it's going to score first. Then right down here it says coming up, it'll do the perforation blade, then the fine point blade. So I need to make sure that my scoring wheel is in my machine first. I'm switching out my fine point blade with my scoring wheel. I absolutely love my Cricut Tool Organizer. It is perfect if you have a lot of blades. 
Here's what the scoring wheel looks like. It's one of the quick swap tools where you can use different maker tools with the same housing. This organizer has a bottom piece that holds all of the different blade tips. They also have numbers on them so you know which one is which. The single scoring wheel is 01. To add the housing, you just place it in the slot and press the button on the top down at the same time. Then you just line up the gears together in clamp B. I place the printed sheet on the top left corner of my mat. I'm using my green mat because it's not as sticky anymore, otherwise I would use the blue mat. I load it into the Cricut machine and first it'll read the black registration lines, then it'll score down the center of the card. Now it's telling us to switch to our perforation blade. To switch the blade, I press the button down and take off the scoring wheel tip, then I add the perforation blade. The perforation blade has a cap on it, but once you place the blade on, then you can just pull off the cap. This also has a number on it as well, it's number 11. In Cricut Design Space, the screen will show you what number it is also. I place it in clamp B, then press the blinking C. You don't want to unload the mat at all when you're switching between different blades. And the last part, it says to load my fine point blade. Here I'm adding my fine point blade and it's the last blade to switch out. Once it's done, I bend the mat backwards to remove the paper from the mat. And it might be hard to see here, but there is the scoring line and the perforation cuts. What's neat about the perforation blade is it doesn't cut all the way through the material. It's going to have us go through the exact same process with the next one and we're going to send this to the printer and do the exact same thing. These are done. It's going to do the last part, but I'm using an 8.5 by 11 cardstock sheet and I forgot to change that on the other screen. It's set to 12 by 12, so I'm just going to hit edit and I guess it won't let me change it on here, so I'm actually going to hit cancel and hit cancel cut. Then I am going to come back into this screen and change it to 8.5 by 11. And it looks like it'll still fit on one sheet, which is really nice. So I'll hit continue, and then it's going to connect to my maker. You'll just want to make sure it starts off with this instead of going back to one of these. I'm going to select light cardstock again, and it looks like it is going to this one. It says to load the light blue pen first, and then we'll also have the fine point blade in, and then the next time it'll switch to the pink. Here's the Cricut gel tip glitter pen. The color is light blue, and I love these Cricut pens. They're so pretty. I add this to clamp A, and the Cricut will draw with this first. Now it says to switch it to the pink pen. Here's the pink glitter pen. I switch that out, then press the C button. The last thing the Cricut will do is cut out the rectangles with the fine point blade. Now I'm ready to assemble the cards. I fold at the score line and it works really well to use the scraper tool to press it down. I like to use my weeding tool to get the perforation started a little bit before putting the rest together. This makes it a lot easier to peel it when you are ready to. I'm using art glitter glue to glue the cards together. This stuff is amazing and it even comes with a fine tip to glue like little areas of cards together. I'm not using it in this video, but it was recommended to me by a lot of you in one of my latest card YouTube videos and I got it from Amazon. I can link it down below. 
Here I'm just gluing the insert into the card and I just try to make sure it's lined up a quarter inch on each side but just by eyeballing it just to make sure that it lines up inside the balloon. Then I glue the front of the card down. I just make sure not to glue anywhere inside the perforation cuts. Here I'm doing the same thing for the other card. Here's how they look all pieced together, and now here's the reveal for what gender we are having. It's a girl! We are so excited to be adding to our family in early February. I hope you enjoyed this video. The perforation blade is super fun for reveal cards. I think they would even make cute cards to ask bridesmaids to be in your wedding. You can get super creative. I would also love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell if you don't want to miss any of my videos.